Ladies and gentlemen, it's rainmaking time. Welcome to today's show. Today, our guest is Jay Dwight, who is a registered investment advisor who owns Dwight Investment Council in the state of Maine. He's a registered investment advisor, a columnist with Populist Economics at the Sun Journal. He's on the advisory board of the Maine Heritage Policy Center, a speaker on energy independence. He's president of the Kennebunk Land Trust, former president of the Rachel Carson Natural Wildlife Preserve, and former board member of the Maine Audubon Society. Now, he calls himself a bird nerd because he leads bird trips since the age of 14, leading whale watches, bird counts, breeding bird surveys, hawk watches. This is a man you want to listen to who has some very interesting insight and things you haven't thought about regarding wind power, debt and deficit funding, aggregate demand, and a whole host of other things that are relevant to think about regarding the environment, um, cost economies, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Jay Dwight to its rainmaking time. Good morning. Thank you, Kim, for your time and uh, for the opportunity to speak with me uh, about these issues. Thank you. When we first spoke, you shared about the state of Maine and that there's this great focus on alternative energy. It's a rural, mountainous place with a lot of natural environmental attraction. What do we need to know about what's happening in Maine today? As far as wind power goes, generally the, the biggest problem is that wind is not an effective source of electricity or cost-effective either. It's not efficient or cost-effective. And Maine has been the focus of development by a company called First Wind, which actually is the largest privately owned um, wind power company in the United States. It has operations not only in, the United States, in Maine, it has operations in New York, Wisconsin, and Hawaii. Um, it also has a subsidiary called Deepwater Wind, which is into offshore wind power farms. This company happens to be owned by... Um, D.E. Shaw and Marston Dearborn, two hedge funds, which one of which is located out of New York and Marston Deer- Dearborn actually is located out of Chicago, Illinois. What's interesting about D.E. Shaw, David Shaw is the uh, founding member of that uh, particular company, uh, hedge fund, managed about $14 billion. He is now employed by the Obama administration as their, um, hang on a second, I'm pulling up exactly, He's uh, been appointed to the Council of Economic Advisors and Science Technology in 1994 by Clinton and is now again by uh, President Obama in 2009. So he's a member of the study group on presidential science and technology advisory assets. So he's, he's directly involved with wind within the Obama administration. Lawrence Summers, who was previous president of Harvard University, worked for D.E. Shaw for a few years and then went to the Obama administration. He, while he was at D.E. Shaw, he earned $5.2 million. Now, D.E. Shaw's interest in First Win is they own half of the company. Marston Dearborn is also out of Chicago. They have tight connections with uh, Rahm Emanuel. Both um, these companies are benefiting directly from stimulus funds through grants that D.E. Shaw received through First Wind for projects they are, had already built and constructed in Maine. One is the uh, Mars Hill wind farm, and the other is uh, Cohocton Wind out in New York. They received $115 million of our taxpayer money directly. Wind power is probably the, is the most expensive and high, most heavily subsidized source of electricity in the United States at $23.45 per kilowatt. The next near highest, you know, everyone says that nuclear energy is the most subsidized. Well, it's not. They only receive about 65 cents a kilowatt or 0.65 per megawatt. So why this is a problem is all this money is going down into into the uh, first wind and right back out to a hedge fund. None of it is staying in the state of Maine particularly at all, and they're going to be driving up the cost of electricity for not only Mainers but all over the country to the tune of where... Maine um, will be paying something in the order of 24 to 50 cents a kilowatt for power. What is it now? Right now it's about 15 cents, including the transmission. 
interestingly enough, the transmission company is owned, Central Maine Power is owned by um, Eastern Utility Association, which is owned by a Spanish company named Iberdrola. Iberdrola has been driving this throughout Europe, and the cost of electricity in Europe is somewhere in the area of, depending on what country you're in, 30 to 50 cents a kilowatt right now after they put in thousands of wind turbines, which don't work effectively to reduce CO2 emissions at all or um, reduce um, oil or natural gas dependency one iota. Is that a fact? Does it, it reduce fact, oil and gas efficiency? Seriously? Seriously. Uh, there have been several studies um, by independent authorities in Spain, Denmark, and Germany. And uh, in Spain's experience, not only did, um, well, here's, here's a quote directly from the, so the experience reveals that these policies would be terribly economically counterproductive. Since 2000, for every four green jobs that they're, they're created, nine permanent jobs were lost. 2.2 jobs were lost for every green job created. High-paying, high-tech, sustainable permanent jobs were lost to other countries, notably France, Brazil, and the Middle East. Denmark, there were no net job gains, despite the fact that Vestas, which is the largest uh, producer of wind turbines in the entire world, the Danish economy is worse by the diversion of societal resources to wind power jobs. In Germany, policymakers, according to the study, quote, should regard the country's experience as a cautionary tale devoid of economic and environmental benefits. So if we're going to learn from, if we're going to follow the same path, we should actually learn from the experiences of our European cousins. And in every case, economically, that, that we're worse off and environmentally, no improvement whatsoever. I will say one thing. I myself have never understood wind power. I know there's been a huge attraction to it and about it, but I never understood it, A. B, I never understood the economics of it. And C, I'm not sure the audiences do. I just learned, though, just an interesting factoid. I just did two shows on the grid, specifically related to electromagnetic pulse and also geomagnetic storms and how our transformers in the grid are in a terribly vulnerable position. And one of the interesting things that I discovered yesterday was that in some cases it would be valuable, maybe not economically, but as a backup to have wind power or any other type of power that wasn't totally dependent upon the grid. Because I don't know if wind necessitates being connected to the grid the way everything else does. Oh, yeah. In fact, um, the, grid, the grid system that we have today is, is developed upon a completely different premise than wind power even can provide. The premise is that you have a stable system and the use of electricity is pretty much a, it varies on a daily basis. It goes down to a base level at night and rises up during the day when use is heavy and then back down again at night. The cycle, of course, runs pretty much with the business day, um, higher use from 7 to, say, 9 o'clock at night and then dropping off back down to about 6 o'clock in the morning when it begins to go up again. So it's a regular cycle. So there's this thing called base load power, and then there's a thing called peak power. And peak power also comes into play when you get really hot days in the summer when electricity use goes up because of air conditioning or really cold days in the winter uh, when electricity use may go up because of some homes being heated by electricity. In Maine, 80% of the homes are heated by heating oil and uh, about 52% of the electricity produced is produced by natural gas. When now, you when say you throw, heating oil, what do you mean? I'm sorry. I don't know what that means. Heating oil? Yeah. Well, diesel fuel basically uh, is used to power um, and, and burn to heat water, which is then pumped around a house to warm rooms. Okay. So heating oil. The Northeast is the heaviest user of heating oil in, in the entire country, and 80% of that oil, 80% of the homes in, in Maine are, use heating oil to keep themselves warm in the winter. 